introduction to Enki in the world order. The Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation myth, explains how natural phenomena and social institutions on Earth came into being and were regulated. In an earlier Sumerian source, however, the story is different. Everything is established by the god Enki, the clever craftsman who presides over the life-giving fresh waters, the patron of crafts and arts, magic and wisdom. In this myth, Enki blesses the cities of Nippur, the place where the gods are born, Ur, Maluha, and the Indus Valley, and Dilman with abundant crops, flocks, precious metals, and success in war. Then he organizes the sea, rivers, clouds, and rain, turning the barren hills into fields and creating the rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, by filling their beds with a stream of his own semen. Enki also makes the sheep, cattle, and crops multiply and establishes the skills of building and weaving. As he creates each domain, Enki appoints a god or goddess to supervise it. When he has finished appointing the gods their domains, Inanna approaches Enki and complains to him that he had failed to give her a domain. Enki responds by listing numerous powers and domains possessed by Inanna, adding each time young Inanna, What more could we add for you? Finally, Enki says to the maiden goddess, Inanna, you have the power to destroy what cannot be destroyed and to set up what cannot be set up. Now begins Enki and the World Order. Glorious Lord of Heaven and Earth, self-reliant Father Enki, engendered by a bull, begotten by a wild bull, cherished by Enlil the Great Mountain, beloved by Holy An King, Mestri planted in the Abzu rising over all lands, Great dragon who stands in Eridug, whose shadow covers heaven and earth, a grove of vines extending over the land, Enki, lord of plenty of the Nuna gods, Nudimud, mighty one of the Ikur, strong one of heaven and earth. Your great house is founded in the Abzu, the great mooring post of heaven and earth. Enki, from whom a single glance is enough to unsettle the heart of the mountains. Wherever bison are born, where stags are born, where ibex are born, where wild goats are born, in meadows, in hollows in the heart of the hills, in green fields unvisited by man, you have fixed your gaze on the heart of the land like a hal hal reed, counting the days and putting the months in their houses so as to complete the years and to submit the completed years to the assembly for a decision, taking decisions to regularize the days. Father Enki, you are the king of the assembled people. You have only to open your mouth for everything to multiply and for plenty to be established. Your branches green with their fruit. You do honor to the gods in its forests is like a fleecy garment. Good sheep and good lambs do honor to you when the prepared fields. They will accumulate stockpiles and stacks. There is oil, there is milk produced by the sheepfold and cow pen. The shepherd sweetly sings his rustic song. The cowherd spends the day rocking his churns. Their products would do honor to the late lunches in the gods' great dining hall. Your word fills the young man's heart with vigor, so that like a thick horned bull he butts about in the courtyard. Your word bestows loveliness on the young woman's head, so that the people in their settled cities gaze at her in wonder. Next two lines, unclear. And Lil, the great mountain, has commissioned you to gladden the hearts of lords and rulers and wish them well. Enki, Lord of Prosperity, Lord of Wisdom, Lord, the beloved of all, the ornament of Eridug, who establishes commands and decisions, who well understands the decreeing of fates. You close up the days and make the months enter their houses. You bring down, you have reached their number. You make the people dwell in their dwelling places. You make them follow their herdsmen. Next two lines, unclear. You turn weapons away from their houses. You make the people safe in their dwellings. When Father Enki goes forth to the inseminated people, good seed will come forth. When Nudimud goes forth to the good pregnant ewes, good lambs will be born. When he goes forth to the fecund cows, good calves will be born. When he goes forth to the good pregnant goats, good kids will be born. If you go forth to the cultivated fields, to the good germinating fields, stockpiles and stacks can be accumulated on the high plain. If you go forth to the parched areas of the land, next two lines missing or unclear. Enki, the king of the Abzu, justly praises himself in his majesty. 
My father, the king of heaven and earth, made me famous in heaven and earth. My elder brother, the king of all the lands, gathered up all the lands, gathered up all the divine powers and placed them in my hand. I brought the arts and crafts from the Ikir, the house of Enlil, to my Abzu in Eridug. I am the good seaman, begotten by a wild bull. I am the firstborn of him. I am a great storm rising over the great earth. I am the great lord of the land. I am the principal among all rulers, the father of all the foreign lands. I am the big brother of the gods. I bring prosperity to perfection. I am the seal keeper of heaven and earth. I am the wisdom and understanding of all the foreign lands. With the king on Anne's dais, I oversee justice. With Enlil, looking out over the lands, I decree good destinies. He has placed in my hands the decreeing of fates in the place where the sun rises. I am cherished by Ninetude. I am named with a good name by Nine Hersurjaj. I am the leader of the Anuna gods. I was born as the firstborn son of Holy On, after the Lord had proclaimed his greatness, after the great prince had eulogized himself. The Anuna gods stood there in prayer and supplication. Praise be to Enki the much-praised lord who controls all the arts and crafts, who takes decisions in a state of high delight, Enki, the king of the Abzu, again justly praises himself in his majesty. I am the lord. I am one whose word is reliable. I am one who excels in everything. At my command, sheepfolds have been built. Cowpens have been fenced off. When I approach heaven, a rain of abundance rains from heaven. When I approach earth, there is a high carp flood. When I approach the green meadows at my word, stockpiles and stacks are accumulated. I have built my house, a shrine in a pure place, and named it with a good name. I have built my abzu, a shrine in, and decreed a good fate for it. The shade of my house extends over the pool. By my house, the suhur carp dart among the honey plants and the ectub carp wave their tails among the small geezy reeds. The small birds chirp in their nests. The lords bow to me. I am Anki. They stand before me, praising me. The Abgal priests and Abrig officials who stand before me in distant days. The Enkum and Ninkum officials organize. They purify the river for me. In my abzu, sacred songs and incantations resound for me. My barge crown... The stag of the Abzu transports me there, most delightfully. It glides swiftly for me through the great marshes to wherever I have decided. It is obedient to me. The stroke callers make the oars pull in perfect unison. They sing pleasant songs for me, creating a cheerful mood on the river. Nijir Sig, the captain of my barge, holds the golden scepter for me. I am Enki. He is in command of my boat, stag of the Abzu. I am the Lord. I will travel. I am Enki. I will go forth into my land. I, the Lord who determines the fates. Next four lines unclear. I will admire its green cedars. Let the lands of Meluha, Megan, and Dilman look upon me, upon Enki. Let the Dilman boats be loaded with timber. Let the Megan boats be loaded with timber. Let the Megan boats be loaded sky high. Let the Magalam boats of Maluha transport gold and silver and bring them to Nibru for Enlil, king of all the lands. He presented animals to those who have no city, to those who have no houses, to the Martu nomads. The Anuna gods address affectionately the great prince who has traveled in his land, lord who rides upon the great powers, the pure powers who controls the great powers, the numberless powers, foremost in all the breadth of heaven and earth, who received the supreme powers in Eridug, the holy place, the most esteemed place, Enki, lord of heaven and earth, praise. All the lords and rulers, the incantation priests of Eridug and the linen-clad priests of Sumer, perform the purification rites of the Abzu for the great prince who has traveled in his land. For Father Enki, they stand guard in the holy place, the most esteemed place, they fill the chambers, they fill the emplacements, they purify the great shrine of the Abzu. They bring there the tall juniper, the pure plant. They organize the holy in the great music room of Enki. Skillfully, they build the main staircase of Eridug on the good quay. 
They prepare the sacred Uzga Shrine, where they utter endless prayers. Next seven lines missing, damaged, or unclear. For Enki, they are squabbling together, and the Suhurmak carp dart among the honey plants, again fighting amongst themselves for the great prince. The Ektub carp wave their tails among the small Jeezy's reeds. The lord, the great ruler of the Abzu, issues instructions on board the Abzu. The great emblem erected in the Abzu, providing protection, its shade extending over the whole land and refreshing the people, the principal foundation, the pole planted in the marsh, rising high over all the foreign lands. The noble captain of the lands, the son of Enlil, holds in his hand the sacred punt pole, a mess tree ornamented in the Abzu, which received the supreme powers in Eridug, the holy place, the most esteemed place. The hero proudly lifts his head towards the Abzu, next six lines missing or unclear. Sirzer, the boatman of the barge, prepares the boat for the lord. Nigir Sig, the captain of the barge, holds the holy scepter for the lord. The fifty Lahama deities of the subterranean waters speak affectionately to him. The stroke callers, like heavenly gam-gam birds. The intrepid king, Father Enki, dwells in the land. Prosperity was made to burgeon in heaven and on earth for the great prince, who travels in the land. Enki decreed its fate. Summer, great mountain, land of heaven and earth, trailing glory, bestowing powers on the people from sunrise to sunset. Your powers are superior powers, untouchable, and your heart is complex and inscrutable. Like heaven itself, your good creative force, in which gods too can be born, is beyond reach. Giving birth to kings who put on the good diadem, giving birth to lords who wear the crown on their heads, your lord, the honored lord, sits with and the king on Anne's dais. Your king, the great mountain, father and lil, the father of all the lands, has blocked you impenetrably like a cedar tree. The Anuna, the great gods, have taken up dwellings in your midst and consume their food in your Jaiguna shrines with their single trees. Household summer, may your sheepfolds be built and your cattle multiply. May your Jaiguna touch the skies. May your good temples reach up to heaven. May the Anuna determine the destinies in your midst. Then he proceeded to the sanctuary of Urim. Enki, lord of the Abzu, decreed its fate. City which possesses all that is fitting, bathed by water. Sturdy bull, altar of abundance that strides across the mountains, rising like the hills. Forest of Hakur cypresses with broad shade. Self-confident. May your perfect powers be well directed. The great mountain in Lai has pronounced your name great in heaven and on earth. City whose fate Enki has decreed. Sanctuary of Urim. You shall rise high to heaven. Then... He proceeded to the land of Meluha. Enki, lord of the Abzu, decreed its fate. Black land, may your trees be great trees. May your forests be forests of highland mez trees. Chairs made from them will grace royal palaces. May your reeds be great reeds, may they. Heroes shall wield them on the battlefield as weapons. May your bulls be great bulls, may they be bulls of the mountain. May their bellowing be the bellowing of wild bulls of the mountains. The great powers of the gods shall be made perfect for you. May the Franklins of the mountains wear Cornelian beards. May your birds all be peacocks. May their cries grace royal palaces. May all your silver be gold. May all your copper be tin bronze. Land, may all you possess be plentiful. May your people, may your men go forth like bulls against their fellow men. Next two lines, unclear. He cleansed and purified the land of Dilmun. He placed Ninsikila in charge of it. He gave food for the fish spawn, ate its fish, bestowed palms on the cultivated land, ate its dates. Elam and Marhasi, to devour. The king, endowed with strength by Enlil, destroyed their houses, demolished their walls. He brought their silver and lapis lazuli, their treasure, to Enlil, king of all the lands in Nibru. Enki presented animals to those who have no sea, who have no houses to the Martu nomads. After he had turned his gaze from there, after Father Enki had lifted his eyes across the Euphrates, he stood up full of lust like a rampant bull. 
lifted his penis, ejaculated, and filled the tigress with flowing water. He was like a wild cow mooing for its young in the wild grass, its scorpion-infested cow pen, the tigress at his side like a rampant bull. By lifting his penis, he brought a bridal gift. The tigress rejoiced in its heart like a great wild bull when it was born. It brought water, flowing water indeed. Its wine will be sweet. It brought barley, mottled barley indeed. The people will eat it. It filled the Eker, the house of Enlil, with all sorts of things. Enlil was delighted with Enki, and Nibru was glad. The Lord put on the diadem as a sign of lordship. He put on the good crown as a sign of kingship, touching the ground on his left side. Plenty came forth out of the earth for him. Enki, the lord of the destinies, Enki, the king of the Abzu, placed in charge of all this him who holds a scepter in his right hand, him who, with glorious mouth, submits to verification and the devouring force of Tigris and Euphrates, while prosperity pours forth from the palace like oil. Enbilulu, the inspector of waterways. He called the marshes and gave them the various species of carp. He spoke to the reed beds and bestowed on them the old and new growths of reeds. Next, two lines missing. He issued a challenge. Enki placed in charge of all this him from whose net no fish escapes, him from whose trap no living thing escapes, him from whose bird net no bird escapes. Next, one line unclear. They who loves fish. The Lord established a shrine, a holy shrine, whose interior is elaborately constructed. He established a shrine in the sea, a holy shrine whose interior is elaborately constructed. The shrine whose interior is a tangled thread is beyond understanding. The shrine's emplacement is situated by the constellation The Field. The holy upper shrine's emplacement faces towards the chariot constellation. Its terrifying awesomeness is a rising wave. Its splendor is fearsome. The Anuna gods dare not approach it to refresh their hearts. The palace rejoices. The Anuna stand by with prayers and supplications. They set up a great altar for Enki in the Iangura, for the Lord, the great prince, the pelican of the sea. Next one line unclear. He filled the Iker, the house of Enlil, with goods of all sorts. Enlil was delighted with Enki, and Nibru was glad. Enki placed in charge of all this, over the wide extent of the sea, her who sets sail in the holy shrine, who induces sexual intercourse, who rules over the enormous high flood of the subterranean waters, the terrifying waves, the inundation of the sea, who comes forth from the sea, the mistress, of Serara, Nance, he called to the rain of the heavens. He came as floating clouds. He made it rising at the horizon. He turned the mounds into fields, Enki placed in charge of all this, him who rides on the great storms, who attacks with lightning bolts, the holy bar which blocks the entrance to the interior of heaven, the son of An, the canal inspector of heaven and earth, Iker, the bringer of plenty, the son of Ain. He organized plows, yokes, and teams. The great prince Enki bestowed the horned oxen that follow, he opened up the holy furrows and made the barley grow on the cultivated fields. Enki placed in charge of them the lord who wears the diadem, the ornament of the high plain, him of the implements, the farmer of Enlil, Enkimdu, responsible for ditches and dikes. The lord called the cultivated fields and bestowed on them mottled barley. Enki made chickpeas, lentils, and more grow. He heaped up into piles the early mottled and Inuha varieties of barley. Enki multiplied the stockpiles and stacks, and with Enlil's help, he enhanced the people's prosperity. Enki placed in charge of all this, her whose head and body are dappled, whose face is covered in syrup, the mistress who causes sexual intercourse, the power of the land, the life of the black-headed, Aknan, the good bread of the whole world, the great prince fixed a string to the hoe and organized brick molds. He penetrated the molds like precious oil. Enki placed in charge of them him whose sharp-bladed hoe is a corpse-devouring snake, whose brick mold in place is a tidy stack of hulled grain for the ewes. Kala, who makes bricks in the land. He tied down the strings and coordinated them with the foundations, and with the power of the assembly, 
he planned a house and performed the purification rituals. The great prince put down the foundations and laid the bricks. Enki placed in charge of all this him whose foundations once laid do not sag, whose good houses once built do not collapse, whose vaults reach up into the heart of the heavens like a rainbow. Muktama, Enlil's master builder. He raised a holy crown over the upland plain. He fastened a lapis lazuli beard to the high plain and made it wear a lapis lazuli headdress. He made this good place perfect with grasses and herbs in abundance. He multiplied the animals of the high plain to an appropriate degree. He multiplied the ibex and wild goats of the pastures and made them copulate. Enki placed in charge of them, the hero who is the crown of the high plain, who is the king of the countryside, the great lion of the high plain, the muscular, the hefty, the burly strength of Enlil, Kakan, the king of the hills. He built the sheepfolds, carried out their cleaning, made the cow pens, bestowed on them the best fat and cream, and brought luxury to the gods' dining places. He made the plain created for grasses and herbs achieve prosperity. Enki placed in charge of all this the king, the good provider of Ena, the friend of Ain, the beloved son-in-law, of the youth's son, the holy spouse, of Inanna the mistress, the lady of the great powers who allows sexual intercourse in the open squares of Kulaba, Dumuzi du Kumgal Anna, the friend of An. He filled the Iker, the house of Enlil, with possessions. Enlil was delighted with Enki, and Nibru was glad. He demarcated borders and fixed boundaries. For the Anuna gods, Enki situated dwellings in cities and placed agricultural land into fields. Enki placed in charge of the whole of heaven and earth the hero, the bull who comes out of the Hakur forest bellowing truculently, the youth Yutu, the bull standing triumphantly, audaciously, majestically, the father of the great city of the underworld, the great herald in the east of Holy Anne, Judge who searches out verdicts for the gods with a lapis lazuli beard rising from the horizon into the holy heavens. Yutu, the son born by Ningal. He picked out the toe from the fibers and adapted it for rags. Enki greatly perfected the task of women. For Enki, the people dressed in Suluhu garments. Enki placed in charge of them the honor of the palace, the dignity of the king. Utu, the conscientious woman, the silent one. Then... Alone, lacking any functions, the great woman of heaven, Inanna, lacking any functions. Inanna came in to see her father Enki in his house, weeping to him and making her complaint to him. Enlil left it in your hands to confirm the functions of the Anuna, the great gods. Why did you treat me, the woman, in an exceptional manner? I am holy Inanna. Where are my functions? Aruru, Enlil's sister, Nintud, the lady of giving birth is to get the holy birth bricks as her prerogative. She is to carry off the lancet from umbilical cords, the special sand and leeks. She is to get the Silajara bowl of translucent lapis lazuli in which to place the afterbirth. She is to place the afterbirth. She is to carry off the holy consecrated ala vessel. She is to be the midwife of the land. The birthing of kings and lords is to be in her hands. My illustrious sister, Holy Nine and Sina, is to get the jewelry of Cuba stones. She is to be An's mistress. She is to stand beside and and speak to him whenever she desires. My illustrious sister, Holy Ninmug, is to get the golden chisel and the silver burin. She is to carry off her big flint and asura blade. She is to be the metal worker of the land. The fitting of the good diadem when a king is born and the crowning with the crown when a lord is born are to be in her hands. My illustrious sister, Holy Nisaba, is to get the measuring reed. The lapis lazuli measuring tape is to hang over her arm. She is to proclaim all the great powers. She is to demarcate boundaries and mark borders. She is to be the scribe of the land. The planning of the gods' meals is to be in her hands. Nance, the august lady who rests her feet on the holy pelican, is to be the fisheries inspector of the sea. She is to be responsible for accepting delectable fish and delicious birds from there to go to Nibru for her father and Lil. But why did you treat me, the woman, in an exceptional manner? I am holy Inanna. Where are my functions? 
Enki answered his daughter. Holy Inanna, how have I disparaged you? Goddess, how have I disparaged you? How can I enhance you? Maiden Inanna, how have I disparaged you? How can I enhance you? I made you speak as a woman with pleasant voice. I made you go forth. I covered you with a garment. I made you exchange its right side and its left side. I clothed you in garments of women's power. I put women's speech in your mouth. I placed in your hands the spindle and the hairpin. I gave to you women's adornment. I settled on you the staff and the crook with the shepherd's stick beside them. Maiden Inanna, how have I disparaged you? How can I enhance you? Amongst the ominous occurrences in the hurly-burly of battle, I shall make you speak vivifying words. And in its midst, although you are not an Arabu bird, a bird of ill omen, I shall make you speak ill-omened words also. I made you tangle straight threads. Maiden Inanna, I made you straighten out tangled threads. I made you put on garments. I made you dress in linen. I made you pick out the toe from the fibers. I made you color-tufted cloth with colored threads. Inanna, you heap up human heads like piles of dust. You sow heads like seed. Inanna, you destroy what should not be destroyed. You create what should not be created. You remove the cover from the sem drum of lamentations made in Inanna while shutting up the Taigi and Adab instruments in their homes. You never grow weary with admirers looking at you? Maiden Ninana, you know nothing of tying the ropes on deep wells. But now the heart has overflowed, the land is restored. Enlil's heart has overflowed, the land is restored in his overflowing heart of mankind. Next four lines unclear. Lapis, lazuli headdress, is your prerogative, is your prerogative, is your prerogative, is your prerogative. Next ten lines, unclear. Praise be to Father Enki.